And that was Flomingo, and this is Terry McElberg, a.k.a. Flomingo. Hi, Terry. Hello, Costa. How are you? I'm very well. It's nice to meet you finally. Finally. We've crossed paths here, which is really good. Thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we're here at Mikel's Coffee Shop in Regina, one of the newest coffee places uh, in Regina. And it's great to be here as well. Terry, are we okay to remove the masks now? Absolutely. Okay. I'd rather. Let's Let's then I can that. drink some coffee. I know. I know. And it's terrific coffee, by the way. So cheers. Cheers. All the best. So... We just saw Flamingo in those scenes there. Tell me something, what inspired you to do that? You know, it's a number of things. It's not that, like, I grew up thinking, oh, I want to dress as a, as a woman. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, Flo doesn't really look like a woman, but she's exaggerated. I think I do it because I like bringing awareness. And when I'm dressed like that, People turn their heads. Oh yeah, and then they listen to what I have to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, how did this this you know, flamingo evolve though from the start to where it is now? You know what I uh, I went to a couple drag shows and and you know kind of got an idea of what they were doing, and I contacted a friend of mine who who also does drag um, and just said this is what I want to do, mm -hmm. and they kind of walked me through the process. You know, you kind of. First you pick a name and then you have to, you know, get the necessities, you know, some foundation and stuff. So they took me shopping, got the basics and... Uh, like, what do you mean the basics? Because I wouldn't even know where to start with something You mean like powder that. and foundation. That's your most basics. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Just a little lip chap and mascara. Yeah, but this looks a, like a very sophisticated dress up kind of a session. I mean, what's involved in getting ready and preparing yourself for that? Well, flow is extremely exaggerated. Um, you know, I, when I first started doing drag, I tried to do the more softer look. And I'm like, no, that's just not working for me. Like, I need loud. And, and so that's how Flo became, Flo, who she is right now. But it's about a three-hour process. A three-hour process? Okay. From, from the time I start and say, get off the couch and say, okay, I need to start getting ready for tonight, to the time I walk out the door is three hours. Okay, there's makeup, there's hair. What else are you doing? Well, there's some stuff down there that you got to take care of, Costa. Oh, is that right? You know, okay. it, it's, it's like you have to pad yourself, and, right. and to make it look more realistic, you start putting on tights, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we use dancer tights. And the more you put on, the more it just keeps smoothing out, smoothing out, so it looks like you got the hips, the curves. Mm -hmm. Then you got a corset and tape and tuck and cinch and pull. And oh, my God. That is three hours. Right it, it is a lot of work. That would be a lot of work. Well, um, you say that it's, if you want to get noticed or listened to for whatever your message is, it helps when you dress up as Flomingo. So what is it about Flomingo that people listen to? Well, I mean... I'm loud as it is, you know, and I talk a lot and, and I like talking to people. The thing is, is when you have, uh, you know, a six foot, eight, seven foot drag queen walk into the room with exaggerated everything, people are going to turn their heads. So then when I start talking, they're already looking at me. So that's the nice part about doing it in drag. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about your personal story here. Uh, you've been in Saskatchewan now for about 10 years, but there was a period of time, was it four or five years ago? Well, you, you came out. Yeah, I came out in the fall of 2016. 16. So what was in your thought process that led to that decision to do that? So growing up, I grew up in a small community in Manitoba. Um, and, and I just knew uh, with the family setting I had, everything that I couldn't come out. Um, you know, it wasn't really talked about. You know, I didn't know any gay people. And so I did what I thought I was supposed to do. I married a woman, I had children, I lived an amazing life, and uh, finally I decided, you know what, time is now to come out. Um, I wasn't in a, in a great mental state, um, hiding in the closet. Physically, I wasn't doing well. Um, I got to a, a weight of 540 pounds. Um, you know, there was just a lot of mental issues that I was dealing with. I turned to food to, to help mm -hmm. comfort me. Um, so then I finally decided, you know what, I have to live my true authentic life and I came out of the closet. And what happened when you did that? With my, my immediate family, like my children, my ex-wife, um, it went great. Uh, my kids accept me, they know who Flo is, um, I'm still their dad, they're still a big part of my life, my ex-wife. We almost kind of grew closer after the separation when I, when I came out because it was kind of a, a relief for her knowing, okay, there's nothing I could have done, you mm -hmm. know, this is, this is who he is. Um, with my parents, uh, the last thing my father said to me, well, and I'll, I'll paraphrase it a little bit, but basically, you're not welcome in our life anymore. 
Um, which is a true, you know, something that happens to a lot of LGBTQ2S youth when they come out. They may no longer have a home to, to go to. How did that make you feel when your parents stopped accepting you like this? It hurts. I mean, no matter what age you are, it hurts. The biggest thing is, is I'm, at the time, was 34 years old. So I could handle it. You know, I, I had the tools to handle it. I also relied heavy on my community. And when I say community, I mean the LGBTQ2S community. Um, that's one amazing thing about coming out is you get a new family. Um, they may not be blood, but they're there for you. So I relied heavily on them. And I still had my kids. And I, you know, my ex-wife was still part of my life. And uh, my health was there. So I got through that. Um, the thing is, is there's a lot of youth that hear that and they don't have somebody to turn to mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of what my mission is is yeah. to to make sure that the youth um, know that they're loved and that they're you know accepted and it doesn't matter you know your your gender your sexuality how you identify you are human and you belong and you are loved and I think a, a lot of people would share your sentiment that they want to support people of all backgrounds of, of sexual preferences and such but you've taken it to the next level what takes you to that level where you want to make a difference in your community for these young people. Well, and, and um, you know, just trying to, to kind of go on what you what you said is there is a lot of people out there that do accept and they have the same feelings that no matter who you are, you belong. Mm -hmm. But there's you know an equally or even larger portion of people that that don't believe that. You know, um, we've come a long way in Saskatchewan in Regina, um, but we are still not where we need to be. Um, you think of the, the gay rights movement and whatnot. Yes, we've pushed the, the boundaries, but we still don't have equal rights. Mm -hmm. um, you can go in and donate blood. I can't um, as a gay man. Um, you know, gay marriage was just legalized how many years ago? So there's still, you know, stuff we're fighting for. When you look at the trans community, um, transgender people, uh, the expected life is not over the age of 37 for somebody who identifies as trans, and that's because they're being murdered. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've come a long way, but there's still a long ways to go. What tells you that there's, uh, uh, there's still so many people don't accept, say, what you do, for example, your lifestyle? What, what tells you that? Like, how do you know that to be the case? You know, social media is probably, you know, it was one of the best inventions, but it's one of the worst inventions, too, because you just go and read the comments on any um, article the a media outlet has, has put out there about um, the LGBTQ movement. And, you know, every fourth comment on there is going to be something derogatory about our community. Um, I've, I've seen it myself. I've witnessed it, um, you know, people who, who don't agree with our lifestyle. Um, you know, I've had violence against me in the past. Um, I violence marched against you? What do you mean by that? I was in, I want to say this was last year or the year before, I was in Medicine Hat and uh, I was doing a show in drag. And uh, at the venue I was at, um, a group of men actually jumped me. Um, and, you know, they were, they were against who I was as a person. Thankfully, my friends were there. And, you know, I was safe in the end, but um, it, it's happened to me. I walked away pretty easy from that, but there's, you know, some people who don't um, mm. make it out pretty easy. What about the verbal cues you get from, from people? Not to dwell too much on the negative here, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's a part of your life, right, that you have to deal with, and not just you, but, but others in your community. What verbal cues do you get from people or body language sometimes that you may wonder about? You know, when I'm out in drag, per se, um, th there is a lot of positive cues out there because people are intrigued when they when they see me and whatnot. But you can always see the, you know, the talking, um, the snickering. I accept that because I am dressed a little bit differently, right? It, it's not, you know, I'm not walking around like this. I'm, you know, walking around as flow. Um, you know, I was going to mention, I, last year I went to World Pride in New York City. And, you know, I got to march in World Pride through the streets of New York City. I was dressed as Flo. And, you know, there was, there was a lot of hate groups along the route as well, you know, um, with their signs letting us know what they, what they think about us and, you know, their, their messages from God and whatnot. But. Well, uh, get back to your being an advocate here for LBGQT youth. And there's Lulu's Lodge that you're advocating for. You're raising money for this. You've done a lot of outreach. Tell people at home who don't know, what is Lulu's Lodge in Regina? Lulu's Lodge is a LGBTQ2S plus youth home 
um, for the youth who may no longer have a home to go to. For whatever circumstance, maybe it's, you know, their family doesn't uh, accept them. Um, maybe they found themselves in a, in a situation where they, you know, they no longer have a home. Whatever it is, they provide, you know, a safe uh, roof over their head, a warm bed, and uh, a sense of community for, for our youth. And um, what difference has that place made for, for youth, for example? They have um, five beds um, that, you know, they've been max occupancy, about 90%. Um, it has given, and, and I know some of the youth there, um, some, you know, one youth I'm thinking, he's there, been, been there right from the start of Lulu's Lodge, and he's still there now. And it's given him a sense of, of safety. It's given him a home. Um, you know, if he's in a, at his, you know, previous life, he didn't feel like he could live his true authentic life. Mm -hmm. He can do that at Lewis Lodge. You can come home and be exactly who you are. Um, you know, for somebody like me, if I would have come out as a youth, I didn't have a Lewis Lodge. I could have been on the streets. So to know that there is an actual place for, for our youth to go to, no 12 year old, no 13 year old, no 16 year old should ever have to hear, you're no longer welcome here because of you're gay, you're a lesbian, you're transgender. Mm -hmm. So Lulu's Lodge gives them that, that home. And what is the state of Lulu's Lodge? Like how is it uh, managing to even operate? So Lulu's Lodge is pretty much funded by yeah. donations. Um, when you're an LGBTQ to a specific organization there's no federal uh, money for you to have there's no government funds there because it's specific to a, a certain demographic so basically the doors are open because of money that's been raised for Lulu's Lodge. Um, our community has really come together and and raised money for that for that place um, I know I, I've done a lot of work for Lulu's Lodge a lot of advocacy but really it's the entire community that has come together to do this so you're, you, you're, you're vocal in your way of uh, raising funds and awareness for Lulu's Lodge. That's one aspect of your life. Um, you, you entertain too. You're a good entertainer. I saw some of that Whoa. stuff out there. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good stuff, let me tell you. But uh, in saying that, what are your plans now? Like, what, what, What's down the road for you? You know, COVID has really put a damper on a, you know, a lot of the stuff that mm -hmm. I like to do. Um, I do like to entertain people I you know I, I'm definitely not the best entertainer out there but I have a good mouth on me and people like to listen to what I have to say um, before COVID I had a, a monthly show at the Cure Kitchen and Bar with um, my co-host Katie Harry and that show was basically dedicated to raising money for for Lulu's Lodge um, until COVID is over we've had to come up with you know some unique ways um, to raise money so I've been doing some online shows um, we're kind of looking at uh, the 30th of January to do a, a cooking show with Flo, and I have a, a celebrity guest uh, a baker that's going to be on there. Um, so, you know, it's kind of looking at avenues right that, like that. Um, you know, I don't sell tickets, so really everything I do, I look for, for donations. I don't get paid for this, but if, you know, if I can raise $1,000, $2,000 for Lou's Lodge in the non-profit world, that's a lot of money for them. Yeah, and also raising some positive awareness as well, Absolutely. which is a good thing. Terry, Flo, Mingo, thank you so much for joining me today here at Mikhail's Coffee Place in Regina. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.